Okay, um, thank you for being here today. Uh, my presentation is called uh, Universities and Wikimedia, Increasing Participation Through Student-Run Efforts. Before we get into the main part of the talk, I'd like to give a brief introduction, describe it, some background about myself and how I got to talking about this today. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Rochester in upstate New York, where I studied both political science and music. While I was there, I was involved in various activities on campus. I served as an elected student senator for three years and worked with several student organizations directly while in this role. In addition, I founded and served on the leadership of, for four years, Cards Club at the University of, of Rochester, a club based around card games. I've been active on Wikimedia projects since 2017, and I am a native speaker of German and English, and also proficient in French and Chinese, and I've contributed to many articles in these languages. First, I'd like to talk about what and how can universities contribute to the Wikimedia movement? Universities are nonprofit institutions whose goal is to, is to gather, and gather research and disseminate knowledge and to educate the next generation. Universities are organized into these high-level constituent parts, which I've put up on, on this stage. Universities are organized into departments, which have faculties, uh, professors, that teach there. Libraries serve the whole university or departments of it. And student organizations are important drivers of the sense of community on university campuses, which allow students to develop leadership skills and to participate in activities that they are interested in. I've highlighted two major parts of the university which I believe are, made, are major potential assets for the Wikimedia movement, both the university libraries and the human resource, which is not only professors, but also the students and student organizations. First, I'd like to talk a bit about university libraries. University libraries serve as the knowledge and information resource centers of universities. These provide access to not only the books in their collection, but also journal articles online that may otherwise be behind paywalls. As an example of a university library collection, my university, the University of Rochester's library, has a vast uh, rare books collection, which also includes uh, medieval manuscripts, papers of the founder of Rochester, New York, letters of the British uh, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, letters of World War I soldiers, all the way to the papers of recent Rochester elected officials, which is a very wide uh, breadth of resources. Next, I'd like to talk about university students. I believe that students are a massive untapped resource for the Wikimedia movement. The US alone has about 15 million undergraduate students, shown in this graph here, as well as 3 million graduate students, which are not shown by the graph, in attendance per year. And if just the 1% of this population in any given year were to make a contribution, not necessarily the same people, but any 1% of this population, this would be about 150 or more contributions per year. This illustrates how students are a big potential resource for the Wikimedia movement to harness. In addition, it's relevant to consider what are university students studying? Their interests are very diverse. This pie chart illustrating bachelor's degrees by field of study in the United States in the 2021 to 2022 academic year shows that in this academic year, over 40% of students uh, pursued degrees other than well-known fields such as engineering. This illustrates the vast diversity of knowledge that that students acquire over the course of their studies, further highlighting how students are a massive untapped resource. In addition, students already have many of the required skills to contribute to the Wikimedia movement. For example, undergraduate students do research projects and presentations. During my second year at the University of Rochester, I did a presentation about forests in Chile. Now, there is a, an article on the English Wikipedia forestry in Chile, but at the time of my doing the project, 
this article was only about a paragraph long and only cited a single source. That's not very useful for finding information. However, over the course of doing the project, I found many sources with information that I could have easily added to the article at the time. But at the time I didn't, which I will get back to later. This is just one example of the kind of project that an undergraduate student would be doing that would lead them to gather information from, from sources that can then be added to Wikipedia, which is a next step that is often not taken. In addition, graduate students pursuing a PhD do research for their thesis, and which requires them to gather specialized knowledge in their field and to do research experiments to get this knowledge. And thus, they could easily contribute to articles using their specialized knowledge. In addition, many students already casually browse Wikipedia and use it as a starting point for information. So it would only be a matter of making the jump from gathering information, from gathering information to actually making an edit. Thus, uh, both undergraduate and graduate students could easily contribute to Wikipedia, which begs the question, why don't they? Now that I've given an overview of universities and university students' state of mind, I think we can all agree that there is good reason to want students to become more involved in Wikipedia. But the question is, are we, are we trying to make this a reality? Are we doing enough to make this a reality? I'm sure many of you already know the answer, but to me the answer is both yes and no. Currently within the Wikimedia movement, there are various efforts targeted at universities. For example, within the US and Canada, the Wiki Education Foundation, which just presented before me today, has plenty of initiatives targeted at universities, which are mainly focused on, on departments, uh, professors, and database facilities, and getting people from those to contribute to Wikipedia through, through integrating it into the courses. Libraries trained by this initiative have hosted events. At the University of Rochester, during my four years there, I attended two events hosted by the University of Rochester Library, which aimed to get students interested in contributing to Wikipedia. The first event was an introduction to Wikipedia editing focused on climate justice for Open Access Week. The second event was a series of weekly events bringing items from the library special collections online through both Wikipedia and Wikidata. Though these events were based on a very good theoretical foundation, they ended up not being very well attended and did not result in continued interest. So then, what happened? There are several reasons, there are several reasons why. On a university campus, students are very busy, not only with their academic coursework, with many of them pursuing multiple majors, majors and minors, but also with their involvement in other activities on campus. There are a multitude of activities going on at any given moment on any university campus. For example, the University of Rochester has about 200 student clubs and 23 different varsity sports teams. In addition, many students there are involved in independent research projects as well. This is not something that is unique to the University of Rochester, but is common to universities across the United States as well. For example, the University of Michigan has over 1,500 student clubs. In addition, there were some factors specific to the library events that I described that resulted in their relative lack of success. First off, the events were not advertised very well. The first event was not advertised on social media at all, and I only found out about it from a screensaver on the monitors of the library computers. The second event, the Rare Book series, was advertised on social media, but it was only advertised on a secondary account, which was the Rare Books and Special Collections Instagram account, instead of the main library Instagram account, which has a lot more followers. In addition, the timing of the events was somewhat inopportune. The first event was held on a Wednesday early in the afternoon, and I had, I had to leave this event early because I had class. The next series of events was held during Wednesday evenings, which is also a time when many students have different, have different, have class and other obligations. 
For example, those events I also had to leave early because I had orchestra rehearsal on Wednesday evenings. The lack of success in these, of these library events reflects the relatively minimal involvement in Wikimedia projects on gen, in general on campus. As an elected student senator, I spoke with many different uh, students across the university in different class years. And from my discussions with these students, I found that there was minimal student involvement in Wikipedia on campus and almost none in other Wikipedia projects. This uh, lack of uh, interest in the Wikipedia projects uh, reflect, was reminded me of a presentation done by Wikimedia Poland a few years ago, summarized in a diff post, why don't young people want to edit Wikipedia? This presentation found that misconceptions about the nature of Wikipedia were at the root of young people's relative lack of interest. There were several misconceptions that this presentation had identified. First, the misconception that Wikipedia is unreliable. Even though this has diminished in recent years, there is still a lingering sense of Wikipedia's unreliability. I remember in my early education, a lot of, a lot of school, my teachers in, in school even banned students from using Wikipedia, saying that there was too high of a risk of inaccurate information. Even though nowadays people might be more trusting of Wikipedia, there is still this lingering sense of, dis of it's not reliable based on this. In addition, another major misconception that was found was that the idea that Wikipedia is faceless or that nobody knows who writes the articles. This is not entirely true. And even though students, as I mentioned, already have the required skills to make contributions, this, uh, this leads them to think that they may, might not. These misconceptions today from both talking to other students at the University of Rochester and discussions with my high school friends attending different universities, I found that these misconceptions are still a challenge that we need to address today. There are two major takeaways from, from my findings that I would like to discuss in more detail. The first one is, how do we improve campus attendance at campus events like the ones I described? Library-sponsored events are a good place to start, but in order for these events to succeed, they need to be supported by structures conducive to their success. First off, these events need to be better advertised. One easy way to advertise these events better is to advertise them on social media, because everyone nowadays is on social media. This would be accomplished by using high-visibility social media accounts that students will see. This would include not only the main accounts of the library, the university, and others, but also the accounts of student organizations. Next, uh, the events need to be planned for time slots where the target audience has time, has time to attend them. Some that even if there are conflicts, the, event, the, the events should be repeated. In addition, events need to be planned with themes. I know that if there was a the I know that if there was an event themed around the environment, this would provide part of the push needed for me to bring the contributions from the forestry project that I described earlier, the sources and the information from this project onto Wikipedia, and to make a to make a contribution. I had previously I had previously even started doing this, but at the time I didn't because I got busy with other events on on campus. So this, this is just one illustration of how a theme to an event can help it succeed. In addition, groups interested in the theme should be, should be involved, which would include not only faculty, and, but also student organizations. There should be more work with student organizations in planning, in planning these events because these organizations can get their members to attend. The presence of library staff and faculty would, of course, boost the level of confidence and trust in, in Wikipedia. Uh, helping deal with the misconception that I described earlier. This provides some ways for university libraries to succeed better at, at events, but we are not all university libraries. Which leads me to the next major takeaway, which is a proposal for a roadmap aimed at improving university student participation rates. <clears throat> In order to raise participation rates of, of students, 
we need to actively campaign for the Wikimedia mission. Even though it's obvious to us that the Wikimedia movement is a movement for a better world, what's obvious to us might not always be obvious to others. We need to start early, even starting with the high school students before they reach university. I myself started in high school, and if, people, if we get people interested early enough, uh, people will want to continue. And one way of getting people interested early on is to, recognize, is to recognize early adopters who join early on, such as perhaps by giving them certificates for their presentation or by inviting them to events such as conferences. In addition, in order, we must uh, maintain a consistent presence for the Wikimedia movement on university campuses. We would do this by recruiting sponsors at universities, which would of course include librarians and professors, but also could sometimes include unexpected sources like admissions officers, because admissions officers at the University of Rochester had noticed a poster pre presentation I made at Wikimania 2019 in Stockholm and made special reference to it in my acceptance letter. So this shows how people from unexpected sources can, can also help uh, maintain people's interest. Having sponsors at universities would also play an important role in clarifying and addressing misconceptions that students might have about Wikipedia. In addition, we must guide students in order, in order to leverage their interests and their future activities for in ways that benefit the Wikipedia movement, such as by starting student clubs. So why student clubs? Student clubs in universities are often relatively small or, or organizations, which can be as small as at least a dozen people even, which uh, is a smaller group which provides a lower activation, bar activation barrier to create from scratch. Because student clubs are relatively small organizations, they create a sense of a close community working together in order to achieve a common goal, which if you think about it is exactly what the Wikimedia movement is. Student clubs are also good because they are supported by university resources. Student clubs can reserve meeting and event spaces on campus to host not only the regular meetings, but also larger events. And in addition, clubs receive funding from universities, which they can use to purchase event supplies and also to fund travel to events such as conferences. In addition, for student clubs, it's easier to develop uh, meeting full meetings with a theme because students will choose a topic that they themselves are interested in and work together with it within this topic. Once a student club is established and initially successful, it's necessary, it's necessary to ensure the, its continuity. Student clubs can fall apart because, they're <clears throat> because their founders graduate and, uh, and there's no clear plan for succession beforehand. Therefore, it's for a student club to continue to succeed, it's important to recruit new leaders every year and to plan for continuity according to the structure of how student clubs are structured. With interest in student clubs, there will always be interest in leadership. In addition, student clubs should maintain their relations with library staff and professors because these can, these can help them, even though, even though such structures are, would be secondary to ones created by the students themselves. In addition, it's important to maintain, continue, to continue to keep students engaged by getting them opportunities to attend events such as conferences like this one, because uh, this will help them realize that there is a community beyond just what they see on screen and beyond just what they might see at their own university. Because when all you see from others is just words on a screen, it doesn't feel as real as actually meeting others. The establishment of Cards Club at the University of Rochester and its success in the past four years have, have shown me the, these insights as well as shown that student clubs can be successful drivers of community. I hope I have shown you today that uh, university students are a largely untapped resource that the Wikimedia movement should harness. I hope I've also illustrated that student clubs are a viable venue to establish and maintain a Wikimedia presence on university campuses. 
going forward, organized groups within the Wikimedia community need to make more of a systematic effort to recruit and engage students. By doing this, we will make unrealized potential realized and can create an increased future for open knowledge. Before I open, before I open it up to the floor for questions, I'd like to make a few acknowledgments. First off, I'd like to thank uh, Eric Kuchenberger, my classmate and roommate at the University of Rochester, who helped me with the initial discussions leading to this uh, presentation idea. Next, I'd like to thank uh, Andrea Kingston, Wendy Way, and Lauren Nicosia, librarians at the University of Rochester who hosted the initial University of Rochester library events and led me eventually to this presentation. Next, I'd like to thank the University of Rochester Cards Club. Lastly, I'd like to thank uh, Richard Nipel, a board member of Wikimedia NYC, who helped, uh, who helped with further discussions to get to crystallize the ideas of this presentation once they got off the ground. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Yeah. Also like to note uh, this presentation was adapted from a presentation I previously gave at Wikimania earlier this year. So any questions? Yes, in the back. Yes. There's a microphone here, yes. yes. <clears throat> yes. Thank you. So I tried to get students to come to Wikipedia events on this campus and fail miserably. I'm uh, guessing, yeah. I'm guessing you must have faced similar struggles to what I had observed in Rochester. True, but you seem like a great success, actually. So I guess my question mm -hmm. is, like, I would love to have a student like you on this campus wanting to do anything. That would be a, an increase of 100% for me. <laughs> so how, what do you think, since this was a post-mortem, what, what would be success for you? What would be success for me? Well, I feel like, to me, success would be, success would be getting students engaged, getting enough people to start, getting enough people to form a club and to, you know, have a community on campus. Because to me, one of the main things that's important about the Wikipedia movement is the sense of community. Because I started uh, ed editing Wikipedia in 2017, and the first time I ever met other Wikipedians in person was at Wikimania 2019 in Stockholm. And that event was really, that event really kind of really solidified the idea that this is a community. This is not just something I'm doing by myself as I had kind of previously thought. Because there were always people telling me, so what are you doing this for? And, and well, I mean, the answer is, the answer is of course, because if I don't do this, then who else will? But also the answer is that there, it allows me to be part of this community, part of something greater. And this is something that many people I feel do not realize right now. And even though you did say it does appear that I'm successful, yes, but also no, because I was never really able to get people, I was never really able to get other people interested in, in Wikipedia while, while I was at Rochester. I always observed that since I'd already, like I'd already said, students already have the required skills. And in fact, for students who speak multiple languages, this is even more so because, you know, they can do translations. But getting that initial activation energy, I feel, is always the most difficult part. And once you get that, that that's when I feel you have success. Any other questions? Yes. Hello. First of all, I think you're right. I think the club model is the way to go. Um, I was thinking about this before I came in and heard your talk um, about like if to, to sort of set up this network of associated clubs, sort of like a model UN or like, dare I say, like the IVCF does, right? Of like course. this model that networks all these people together and then you dump them all together in a convention or something at some point in time, you know, this whole like network thing. So I'm just wondering, have you, sussed out the willingness to create this sort of network and if and maybe some resources to do that hmm. well i've well in order the, the willing the willingness to do that i feel is kind of the issue because 
like I figured out how to make it happen. I've looked into all of the structures necessary for making something like this happen. I know in theory how to get this done. But the main issue that I faced is, like I'd said, because of misconceptions, people might not be might not be willing to participate. And like I'd said, I know that clubs can be successful because I started one. I was and it was successful during during my four years at Rochester. And like what you had described with the clubs uh, networking, I was also part of, that reminds me of also, I was part of mock trial while, while I was in, in college and we'd often travel to other universities for tournaments. And this kind of uh, reminds me of, of what you were describing with the network. In addition, in terms of how clubs are, are the way to go, this model has seen success in the Central Eastern Europe region. At Wikimania earlier this year, I was talking to other two other university students who had founded clubs, and there were some affiliates that even had structures in place for had frameworks in place for founding clubs at more universities. So, of course, the question from that is, why aren't we doing this in more places? Yes. So I also agree that your model is the model, the only model for a variety of reasons, one of them being that you know, Wikipedia work has to be volunteer work. So I, I have my students um, edit Wikipedia in the classroom, yes. but I actually, they actually do their first draft or the, the only draft that is part of the class on Google Docs. And then we have a conversation about whether they would like to publish that on Wikipedia, because I cannot give them a grade for participating in Wikipedia that would not work with the spirit of Wikipedia, which is volunteering, right? So your model is, the model, right? It has to be people right. wanting to come together. Okay, yes. so given that, I think that part of the thing, like if you could think of like a pre-step, right? Uh, people like myself are part of the problem. Not, I, not personally, right? But professors over and teachers over years have told students that Wikipedia is not an academic thing. And so then I could see how students would be very confused as to su how suddenly it's an academic thing, right? I mean, you can use it for fun, but not really in school. So that's, right. so working with professors to like change that would be an enormous, and, and teachers, and you know, as you said, yes. in middle schools and so on and so forth would be an incredible step. Yes. Awareness, awareness on campus. So awareness is the first step for anything. And as you said, the problem is that there's all these misconceptions. Yes. So to be able to get them, like if you think about it in a very long term, not like tomorrow, but maybe five years, first step, awareness. With the administrators, with the professors, awareness. This is okay, it's totally cool, we can do this together. And once that the environment sets in, then you can have more people. The other yes. thing that I thought of is like, um, you know, bringing the students to conferences is important, but remember that you can't bring that many. You can bring five, 10, 15, yeah. but then, you know. So that's why your model of clubs is so important because then peer, um, peer modeling and also like, uh, you know, like being part of a group that's doing this and feeling validated by your peer group is, is going to be really the way. Because you know, like, again, we can only bring so many students to. Yes. Yeah. Of course. That is very similar to what I've observed myself because the first Wikimedia, the first uh, in-person uh, event, uh, Wikimedia event I attended was Wik Wikimania 2019 in Stockholm. And at that conference, I noticed that I was the youngest person there and there was relatively little participation from other, from other people my age at the which, uh, but later on at Wikimania 2023 in Singapore and then 2024 in Katowice, I noticed that this was kind of changing, that there was starting to be more participation from young people. And I noticed that this was particular, seemed to be particularly strong from places that had established this uh, club structure, because people that in from places that had established this were going to these conferences. So yeah, that's a uh, very good, uh, that's another very good thing to keep in mind. And yeah, you want to add a question next? Um, 
I'm currently a high school student myself, and I'm probably one of the two people in my high school who are actually active Wikipedia editors. And uh, one of the earliest challenges I found while editing were the usage of all those different templates and parameters that you could access through wiki, wiki code mm -hmm. and uh, adhering to all the Wikipedia policies, mm -hmm. which there is quite a lot. Yes. So do you think those um, aspects of Wikipedia might be working as barriers from student editors uh, of accessing Wikipedia editing mm. more? Yeah, that's a very good question. And yes, that yes, I do believe that uh, this could be a barrier to some. What you were talking about with the uh, wiki code, I remember when I was starting out having to learn by myself uh, what do all these brackets and symbols mean. <laughs> so I can so the, obviously obviously that is that could be a challenge, which is kind of being addressed by the visual editor. However, the visual editor can can be buggy at times. So that is still very much ongoing. Also, I found that although the visual editor was a great tool for beginners, uh, in order to really access the full potential of Wikipedia's code and syntax, you really had to go into source editing. And source editing is much more harder than visual editing. Of course. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like maybe if there was a, maybe if there was some kind of building off of that, I feel like maybe if there was some kind of way to get people from the, to teach, I guess, people would start materials like teach people would start out with the visual editor, how to like move to like the source editor might be beneficial. Thank you. In that case, yes. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Talking about rules, I'm not a, uh, I've never been a professor, I'm not even a college graduate myself, but when I teach how to write Wikipedia, I say, Rules, yes, we have thousands and thousands of rules, and nobody knows half the rules. And you're going to go back across the rules and go right ahead. Of uh, course. That, that's how it works. You, uh, somebody says, no, you broke that rule, and they fix the problem, or else they just yell at you. But, uh, but, you don't, but mainly, you just go, go take your lesson, and yes, you can fix it. You can eventually make it fit the rules. Of course. Uh... There is a page on Wikipedia WP colon IAR, Wikipedia colon ignore all rules, which is, which, yet, yeah, which is something that, again, also might not be readily apparent to people that they don't need to worry about that at the beginning. You know, they'll, they'll eventually, eventually they will figure it out. Um, this is my, uh, I'm, I'm still new to Wikipedia and such and drafting my first page, but I'm really surprised that um, I'm hearing from so many academics. Um, I'm not surprised about the challenges, but I'm surprised that folks aren't working more with the like arts amenities of your universities to incorporate the, like, the documentation editing process of Wikipedia. It seems like the, mm. like, I, I don't understand how you can make a club where people are essentially writing research papers. It does not sound fun. But I mean, th this, I think that we are gathered around this because we feel like it's very important and it can be very gratifying to right. be a part of this process. Right. But I don't hear anybody talking about how do you actually make this fun. Um, and I, I'm, uh, mostly in the exhibition and film world, and I came here through a project that I'm working on trying to get um, uh, the film, the post-film discussion, and then the editing and documentation process to follow that. But what I still think is going to be the, the, the impossible 12-foot wall is getting people up to speed on all of the rules of how to uh, edit. And so I'm curious, honestly, for anybody in the room, if they have any insights on that. Um, and, and, and I mean, like, it could just be that, like, you continue to promote that there is a Wikipedia edit-a-thon or session that is going to be following this film, following this discussion, following this, like, uh, uh, literature talk or something like that. And as people continue to show up, you keep educating them a little bit more, a little bit more until it becomes more of a formal process. But I'm kind of curious if anybody has somehow um, tapped into 
you know, a more holistic model of bringing people into a club that I think uh, is more fun to be a part of. Yes. Uh, and I don't mean any of that derogatory. Uh, derogatory. <laughs> of course. I mean, why would you mean it derogatorily because you're here? So, so what I was, so these are definitely some very good points. I mean, when you put it like that, a club where people get together to write research papers, you're right. That doesn't necessarily sound fun, but like I said, a major component of the reason why we do this is the community. And like one thing that I do think is important to remember is that in a club like this, people would uh, choose things that they're interested in and uh, collaborate on, on these topics and effectively is what, is what I think. So of course, getting, getting it started is always, like I've, like I've said earlier, getting it started is always the most difficult part. But once we get over the initial activation energy, then I feel that I feel that it'll be successful. I'll just make I'll make some quick points. I think you said something earlier about why it matters to edit Wikipedia, and that's what we have to really tap into. Yes. So for me, I'll just maybe I'm, I'll just put this on my um, vision board for next year. Hopefully next year I'll be back to report on this. Um, working specifically with first generation college students to talk about editing uh, and updating bios of other like notable first gens. Uh, I'll use Michelle Obama as an example, but you can't edit her page, just mm -hmm. like, locked down, right? But like tapping into the bios of folks who um, first in their families that go to college and make that kind of personal connection. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I'm going to put it out there. We'll see if I'm actually able to like move the needle. Um, and there was another point I was going to make. Oh, just in terms of maybe not like a wiki club, but maybe like an ethnic studies club or another cultural club. It's kind of like putting a spinach in the soup, right, is to go in different directions. And maybe mm. one activity of another kind of club mm. is Yes. Writing or editing for Wikipedia. Next year, I'll let you all know what happened. Yes, these are definitely good ideas. And yeah, I was about to say, uh, if this succeeds, present it at Wikiconference North America next year. And also, well, to the other point about cultural clubs uh, participating, that is another good idea that we can maybe tap into existing clubs by having existing club clubs do this. Yes. I know that many universities already have cultural clubs, so that could work. So I, I really like your idea that like every event should be followed by some kind of edit-a-thon, even if it's a small one, to so get people accustomed that, you know, we're doing this, edit-a-thon, we're doing this, edit-a-thon, right? right? So that that model, I think, is fascinating. And if, again, we can convince the administrator, we convince everybody in the university that this is what we do now. Mm. Uh, but something, I, I just want you to know something that happened to me, but Three weeks ago, we were having a conversation about generative AI at, uh, at Rutgers and blah, blah, blah. And there were students in the audience. And, the, and one of the things that really I, I'm not going to forget is a student uh, finally commenting on what we were talking about. And she said that her generation, the way that she felt the, the, the way that the web is happening now to them, there was so much overwhelm of information. Uh, that she sometimes she felt like crying because it was always the fear, you know, the fear of missing out and da da da. So, and um, Wikipedia, Wikimedia projects provide an environment of quiet and peace and that, you know, like like long term thinking. Um, and so, when you contribute to them, you literally are contributing to a better web. Mm -hmm. And saying that to students, saying that why why would you do this? Well, because you know how the web is now, you could actually make a better web. You literally can make a better web for other people. Yes. Right? And that's, that's something that we may want to just talk about. Because I, I have a flip phone, so I'm not, you know, all day with notifications. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's how bad it is. But I, it was shocking to me. The student said, you have to help us. And I am not as overwhelmed because I started really late when I was like 13 or 14. <laughs> and that really shocked me to know that she'd been, you know, bombarded with BS starting at 13 and she thought that that was late, 
right? So I feel like, in a way, what you're trying to do is very important: is to try to tell them you can take over, that you can take back that net, you can make it better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good, very good points. Uh, okay, this will probably be last question. I don't know, I think for um, encouraging people to show up, I think always offering free food is always a good option Oh, yes, there. of course. Yes? Yeah, um, in yeah. fact, yeah, in fact, the events did do this, which I forgot to mention. So that was not the reason why they might not have succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe free beer too, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Um, but also, I think, um, you know, one of the reasons why I edit is, um, you know, it's a good way of uh, letting, letting the world know what you want to hear, I think, and letting everyone, you know, getting, it's a, it's a good way to express yourself, you know? Yeah. All right. Okay. I think that's 